Okay, here we're going to be looking at a consolidated statement of cash flows between a parent and a subsidiary company here. And we're going to specifically be looking at an adjustments of an identifiable account schedule here and how we would set this schedule up and how we would use this schedule here. So first let's go look at our example here. Corp P, the parent company, is going to buy 80% here of Corporation S. So let's go look here at Corporation S or the subcorporation's balance sheet at the acquisition date. <laughs> Now for our assets and our liabilities here, uh, Corporation S or the subcorporation had a book value of these assets here. And what we have to do for our consolidating purposes here, we have to bring these asset and liabilities accounts up to their fair value here. And that could in include any of the accounts here between the assets and the liabilities. But for our example here, we're just going to look at an equipment account and a building account where the equipment here has been appraised up to a, a greater fair value here. And the building as well has been appraised to a greater fair value here at the acquisition date. And we also have in this uh, transaction here goodwill and that has to be accounted for as well. So uh, let's go down and look at how we'd set up an adjusted account schedule here. This would be adjustments to the identifiable accounts. Now this would include all the accounts that would be adjusted from the book value up to the fair value. But for example here we'll just look at equipment here, the buildings, and the goodwill here. So what we have to do is we have to uh, include what our adjustment is, our adjustment amount here. And if there's any amortization required or depreciation, it has to be set up on the schedule here. So for equipment, had an adjusted value up by 120,000 here, a life of five years. So we would be amortizing or depreciating that here at $24,000 per year. Now, uh, we also have this building here appraised up by $50,000. And that we had to determine a life on of 10 years remaining. So we'd have uh, amortization or depreciation at uh, $5,000 per year. And we also have a goodwill here in this acquisition here of $80,000. So what we do is we would be summing those adjusted accounts up here to a total amount of adjustments of $250,000. So it is important. We have to set up this adjustments accounts here and this has to be accounted for in the consolidation process here. So let's go back here and look at our example here. Corp P, the parent buys 80% of Corporation S. So we have to go in and we have to determine the fair value of the net assets in this case. And going back to our balance sheet, our fair value of our assets here were 1500 or 1500 or $1,570,000 here. And the total liabilities here were $300,000. So we have to go up here and determine a fair value or net assets at $1,270,000. So then we just go, uh, our implied price that we had determined here would be uh, the corporation parent had paid a hundred one million eighty thousand for 80%, so the implied price was 1350000 Subtract out the fair value of the net assets, and that gave us our goodwill here. So we have to make these calculations here for setting up our adjustments account. And now, based on um, the, fair the implied value here and the fair value of our net assets, we have to go and we set up this distribution and determination and distribution schedule here where we take the fair value of the subsidiary uh, at 1350000 and then it's divided out between the parent's portion, 80% here, and a non-controlling interest. And then we also take the book value here of the total equity that was the common stock acquired from the subsidiary corporation in retained earnings on its balance sheet here for a total of $1,100,000. And then that's just divided up between the parent and the non-controlling interest. But what I'm getting at here is the fair value of the subsidiary, we determine that. We know the total equity, $1,100,000. And we can go up to the balance sheet again here for the subcorporation S. And you can see their common stock here at $400,000 and retained earnings at $700,000. That came down to our distribution schedule here. So we take this total total equity here of $1,100,000 and subtract it here from the fair value of the subsidiary for $1,350,000 and we get an excess of the fair value over the book value of $250,000 and that would be divided between the parent and non-controlling interest. And the point I want to make here, going through this distribution schedule, we come up with this excess of fair value over the book value 
Now we have to go up to our adjustments accounts here and that has to match. Our adjustments accounts here have to match. In this case it was a $250,000 excess of the fair value over the book value and it matches here with our distribution schedule. So this is a good cross check here. You use your distribution schedule to determine your fair value over your book value and then going back to your adjustments accounts you better came up with the same amount here. So you know that the adjustments that you make have to be in line here with the distribution schedule. So it's a good cross check here. So these adjustments have to be accounted for in the consolidation process. Okay, so the point I want to make here, we have a consolidated uh, financial statement here between the parent company and a subsidiary company. And this consolidated uh, financial statement here probably includes the book value here of the subsidiary company's uh, asset and liability accounts when they consolidated it. So just to review here, this consolidated financial statement and the balance sheets of the companies may not include those adjustments required per the distribution schedule or the adjustments accounts that we looked at. That earlier. These have to be included in the consolidated cash flow statement and these are the counts we're looking at. The equipment, the building, the goodwill, and this amortization amount here. And the goodwill does not get amortized. But this is what has to be included for the consolidated cash flow statement. It has to include these adjustment accounts here. So that's what we have to look at here when we're making our consolidated cash flow statements. So make sure that these adjustment accounts are included in in the consolidated cash flow statement. All right, just an overview here of a consolidated statement of cash flows. It has three sections here. The cash flows from operating activities, and under that we have an adjustment to reconcile net income to net cash here, and that's using the indirect cash flow method here. And then we have cash flows for investing activities and cash flows for financing activities. Now going up to our adjustments accounts here from the subsidiary's balance sheet. These are the accounts that have to be included here in a consolidated statement of cash flows. So any of the identifiable accounts here that affect this consolidated statement here have to be included in this consolidated statement of cash flow. So just looking at our example here, we had an equipment account here uh, that had um, an amortization here of $24,000 per year and we also had a building account here that had an amortization here of $5,000 per year or depreciation in this case for both of them. So going over to our consolidated statement of cash flows here, those would be included here as a depreciation expense. So they would have to be make sure that they're included included here as a depreciation expense. In this case we'd be adding them back here for adjustments here for the reconcile our net income here. So again going back to our adjustment accounts here, any of the asset or liability accounts that would affect the consolidated statement of cash flows have to be included in that statement of cash flows here. And for our goodwill here that isn't amortized and that wouldn't be included in the statement of cash flows. But there are other accounts. I'm just using these two here equipment and building here as in examples here that have to be included in this consolidated statement of cash flows.